It was less than exciting, but it really wasn't as bad as we felt like it was. Let's review the Denver Broncos' first preseason game against the Arizona Cardinals. What is up, Broncos country? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm excited about this one because we're doing our first game review. I'm not gonna be going into doing like an in-depth recap like people like Tim Jenkins or some other folks who are out there who do like legitimate recaps on games, breaking down the film, things like that. I'm gonna give you some of my reactions, the way that I feel about some of the things that happen on the field, and we're just gonna jump into it. But before we get there, if you haven't done so yet and you consider yourself to be a Broncos fan like me, please click that subscribe button. Would love to build some more community. Uh, definitely wanna hear from you all, so leave me how you felt about this game in the comments. Uh, below. I want to get the conversation going just to kind of see how we're feeling out there. Put some feelers out there. Test Broncos country. You know, what are what are we thinking? How are we feeling? What, what did we walk away from this game thinking about the 2023 Denver Broncos? And there's actually a link in the description for you to support me and support this channel um, at buymeacoffee.com. So that's going to be linked in the description for you. If you'd like to support me, you don't have to do that. Nothing that I do here is behind a paywall, so everything you can get for free. Um, just would love your support. Help me grow this channel. So let's go ahead and hop into this review of the first preseason game for the Denver Broncos. As I was sitting down to take my notes about the way that this game went, I was watching the game through for a second time, and I divided it into you know offense, defense, and special teams. So we're just going to kind of walk through those things, talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, just give some of my initial thoughts on this team moving into the second week of the preseason. Regarding the offense, the offensive line was bad. I'm almost positive that just about every pass that Russell Wilson threw or every drop back that he took, Russell Wilson was getting hit, he was getting hurried, or he was even getting sacked. Garrett Bowles was getting beat by a guy who I couldn't even tell you his name off the top of my head. At granted, Garrett Bowles is coming off of an injury, so maybe we should give him some grace, let him shake some rust off, but at the same time, there's a specific standard that we think that Garrett Bowles can offer this team. There was a point in the first quarter going into the second quarter where Russell Wilson rarely had any time to throw the football. As soon as he got back to the back of his drop back, he had defenders in his face. Even the touchdown pass that Russ threw, he was still having to jump off his back foot and throw it while getting hit by Arizona Cardinals defenders. I've talked about this in a recent video, but if we don't get the protection taken care of, it's going to be another long season of Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos leading the NFL in sacks given up. Specifically about Russell Wilson, I thought Russ looked good, not great. Honestly, that's to be expected in the first preseason game under a new offense, under an entirely new coaching staff, a rebuilt offensive line. It's kind of expected that he didn't look great, but I was pleased to see that Russ actually did look pretty good. As I mentioned, he was under pressure just about every single snap. He was even sacked once and he fumbled when he got sacked. I don't know if it was actually a fumble. Maybe he was down. I'm not sure. I'd, I need to go back and like watch that play closely, but it was just a rough outing as far as protection for Russell Wilson. So he didn't have a lot of time to make things happen. However, Russ was able to move around in the pocket, try to extend plays, try to make things happen. And it actually looked like vintage Russ. And I don't know if I'm the only one who noticed this, but every time Russ let go of the football, it almost looked like the ball was jumping out of his hand. There was a, a different kind of zip on the ball that, that, that wasn't there last year. And I think that that's a good sign for things to come. Not to mention the way that Sean Payton was scheming things up. He was getting guys open, even even for a game where he didn't study any film to prepare for a specific game plan. He just wanted to see what his offense could go out there and do, but his real-time coaching was impressive to see the way that he was going to scheme guys open after a couple, the first couple drives. And Russ actually finished with a stat line that was not bad, but wasn't great at the same time. He finished 7 for 13 for 93 yards and a touchdown with a 102.4 uh, quarterback rating, according to ESPN. And I think there was one drop credited, which was that really ugly Jerry Judy drop that he had right before he caught the touchdown pass. So it's like, whatever. Um, but I actually think I would give maybe two, maybe one and a half more drops. I think that the, the, the quick pass to Troutman early on in the game where it kind of hit Troutman on the hip, he should have brought that in. It was weird that he wasn't able to catch that. And then also this one is kind of 
I'm being picky because I think these are pro athletes, and if the ball hits your hands, you should catch it. The little screen pass where Russ kind of underhand threw it to Samaje P. Ryan. Um, it, hit, it hit P. Ryan in the hands. Samaje has got to bring that in. Um, got to make something happen. I'm going to consider those kind of drops, um, but the one for Jerry was definitely a drop. So three of the incompletions you could maybe not put on Russ, um, but the rest, there was one bad one where he kind of threw it off his back foot and him and I think it was Cortland Sutton were just not on the same page. But overall, I thought Russell Wilson looked good, not great, and I think it's a really good foundation for him to build off of going into the second week of the preseason and maybe the third. I don't know if he'll play in the third week. Um, maybe the third week will be like a full-on dress rehearsal for the starting offense. Um, but moving into the, the the season opener, I think it's going to set him up to be in a much better spot having some of that game time real life action, taking hits, throwing under pressure, things like that. A couple guys on the offense that really stood out to me, obviously, Jerry Judy, man, is an incredibly talented route runner. Granted, he wasn't running against, you know, first team defenders, but these are professional athletes on in the second spot on a depth chart, and Jerry Judy was putting these guys in blenders. You can see on the touchdown catch that he had, it was a simple little slant route, and he kind of did this little shaky move and... I think it was it was the safety or the nickel was covering him and the dude basically fell over and Jerry was wide open like he always is and was able to bring it in and score the touchdown, which was really cool to see, especially after having such a bad drop. It was great that Russ went straight back to Jerry. Um, Jerry was able to bring it back, bring it in literally seconds after just having one of the worst drops I've seen from Jerry in his career as the Denver Bronco. The other player that really stood out to me on the offense was Samaje Pirine. Now, I knew we were getting a really strong running back with Samaje, but I didn't realize how strong of a runner he truly was. He had a play where it looked like he was completely stopped, was going to be tackled, and then just kind of popped out just like Javante Williams has done and continued to run. And I, I don't know, I don't think he got a first down, but he got several more yards after that initial contact, which was really cool to see. And I think that the combo of Javante and Samaje in the back in the backfield is going to give defenses fits. And they are going to be so tired after having to deal with these two guys for four quarters at the end of a game. That's going to set really good opportunities up for Russell Wilson in the passing game. Um, later on in the games. And I think that that's the idea that Sean Payton wants to do. He wants to base this whole offense off the running attack, off having two very strong running backs and work in that play action and get the ball down the field based just after giving some run action to the linebackers. But overall, I thought it was a good outing for the offense, specifically the starting offense. And honestly, I'm only going to talk about the starters. I'm not going to talk about any of the second or third string guys, even though that they had some, there were some really good performances from some of the depth guys. I'm, I'm really just going to focus on what our first team was able to do on both sides of the football. Speaking of the other side of the football, the defense picked up right where they left off, it felt like. Now, mind you, we were without Justin Simmons, Patrick Sertan, and Frank Clark, just three big names off the top of my head on this defense, and the defense still looked pretty solid against the Arizona Cardinals offense. Isang Bassey had an interception and was able to return it, set the offense up in pretty decent field position, which was really cool to see, um, especially after he had a pretty poor play in coverage the play right before the interception. Um, so that was really great to see. Good to know that our defensive backs are picking up right where they left off. DJ Jones did leave the game with a C word. I'm not going to say it. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say the word. But DJ Jones left, so I expect him to probably miss a few weeks. Hopefully he'll be back and be ready by week one. Um, and I think that he probably will be. I think he'll be fine. I don't think it was a massive head injury or anything like that. So he should be fine by week one. And a couple guys that stood out to me from this side of the ball, Alex Singleton, of course. The man led the team in tackles last season, and it looks like he's going to do the exact same thing this year. He had a great tackle for loss where he just completely shot the gap and almost took the – it felt like he was able, almost able to take the handoff from the quarterback. He hit the running back almost right as he got the football and had a really great tackle for loss. And I love how the camera was able to zoom in on Alex. The man loves playing football. You can see it in his face. After every play that he makes, he just had a huge smile on his face and was just excited to be out there, which you just you love that from your defensive guys. And then one of the guys that I've had my eye on since we drafted him, Nick Bonito. He looks like he's put on some some muscle mass. He looks like he's ready to go. And he had a really good night 
last night. He's so quick off the line. He has such a great bend. He genuinely reminds me of a smaller version of Von Miller. I think if we can get a guy like Nick Benito playing at a good at a, at a high level, it's going to do wonders for our pass rush just because of how much he reminds me of Von Miller. And then as far as our special teams is concerned, I'm concerned. That was one of the worst kicking performances I have ever seen from a Denver Broncos football team. And it's only the first week of preseason. That's a genuine concern. We should not be already talking about the kicking game at this point in the season. In fact, I would like it if we didn't have to talk about the kickers at all other than them kicking a long game-winning field goal to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And it wasn't just the kickers. Our first punt after our first drive went three and out was a 30-yard punt. I swear this ball, when it hit the ground, it bounced backwards about 15 yards. And it was one of the ugliest sequences of football that I have had to watch, even though I watched the entirety of the 2022 Denver Broncos season. And then we missed three freaking field goals. We left nine points out on the field because we couldn't make a damn field goal. You've got to be kidding me. It was pathetic. Neither of our kickers did a very good job last night at all. We would have had those nine extra points. We would have put 26 points on the scoreboard. Our season average last year was just over 16. It would have been great to see 26 on that scoreboard. It's just the preseason. They're working the kinks out. But my God, was that bad. So overall, the Broncos looked okay. They didn't look bad. They didn't look great. They looked good enough for where they are in their preseason preparation with a new head coach and a new coaching staff. I'm not worried yet. I might get there eventually if we continue to look the way that we look during this game. But I think overall, I think we're going to be just fine. The Broncos head to San Francisco on August 18th to take on the 49ers at 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, 6.30 Mountain, Whatever, whatever time zone you're watching this from, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I want to know where all the Broncos fans are that are watching these. Um, but it should be okay. We'll see. Should be good. That's going to do it for my review of the first preseason game. Hopefully things get better. I'm confident that they will get better. And if you haven't done so already and you made it to this point in the video, give me a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. That way you're aware every time a new video is uploaded. And if you want to know if the preseason even matters at all, try checking out this video that's going to be somewhere on the screen. Touchdown!